I, I'm Martin Thomas. I'm with DoubleToasted.com, which uh, we do a live stream on Twitch uh, about five to six nights a week, which also gets broken up into clips on YouTube. And you can also visit our own site, DoubleToasted.com. Oh, that's interesting. We started in a studio a lot like this one uh, down at uh, Austin Cable Access with a show called The Real Deal, where we did sort of comical movie reviews. Uh, we did that for a little over 10 years. And um, it was fun, but there was no way to get paid for it because that's the Austin Access rules. You can't have commercials. And it was time to make the move from just doing it live for local Austin to the internet. It's kind of a gamble at the time because it, the internet was not what it is now. Uh, but we took it there in the form of ourselves as animated cartoon characters. It, this very quickly got the attention of a New York media company and they saw it and they said, hey, we want you guys to do this for us. Uh, we're gonna rebrand it, uh, which became Spill at the time. And we started doing these on a regular basis and us as animated characters reviewing movies, which then branched off in the podcast and the podcast, over time, became more popular than the animated reviews. Everybody was getting paid decently and uh, just lots of notoriety. And then one day, Hollywood.com said, we don't want to do this anymore. We, uh, it's doing well, but we thought it'd do better. So we're pulling the plug on it. And at this point, we had to make a decision. Corey and I decided, well, you know what? We've already built the audience. Actually, we had another friend, uh, Brian Brushwood, who's a, a magician and does a popular show called uh, The Modern Rogue. Anyway, he came to us and said, guys, look, you, you've done the hardest part, which is build an audience. Don't let this go. He walked us through doing a Kickstarter to, to re, you know, rebuild everything. We were looking at getting $30,000 so we could build a new website and get things going, and we got it in the first day. And I was like, yes, we did it. And to, to Corey, like, man, we made it. And he's like, well, I kind of lowball that figure. We actually need more like 100,000. And I was like, oh. <laughs> but we still have a month to go. And by just about the end of the month, uh, we had, we'd had the 100,000. And so from that uh, came Double Toasted. And we're, there's no more animated movie reviews, but what we're doing online between, oh, what we started on our own side and then kind of moved over to Twitch and what we do on YouTube, it's very much like what we did at the Access Studio. We've come around full circle. Uh, it was actually Corey's wife. We were just looking for names and I don't know how she came up with the term triple toasted first. And it was like, no, but double toasted sounds good. It was just wanting, it was wanting a name that didn't necessarily pin us down to one thing. That we, like, even though we're gonna talk about movies, we, we go into pop culture and current events and something movie related would just leave us right there where we couldn't really branch off and do other things. So being this kind of nebulous name, it's, you know, it's curious enough where you're like, what is that? And that, that's how the name came about. Oh man. We, we tried doing classic movies, reviewing classic movies on Tuesday, going through those that our audience might not have seen. And every so often we'd slip in a bad movie and the response to that was overwhelmingly higher. So Tuesday has just become, hey, this is where we review the worst movies. Um, Samurai Cop. <laughs> but that's, that's, you know, some of them are, they're so bad that they're enjoyable. Surf Ninjas. Have you seen, have you seen Surf Ninjas? Uh, the Garbage Pail Kids, that was pretty bad too. And, and the thing is, as, as painful as these movies have always been, I'm getting to a point where I'm starting to enjoy them just because it is something to talk about. The best ones are the ones that were just misguided or one where it's fun if the movie was done in earnest, but the uh, technical skill it was just not there. You're going to bring out the girl I had a crush on in third grade? Uh, yeah, uh, because uh, on the show, well, I wear hats all the time. Um, and somehow, I, hats and paisley shirts. And my, uh, so it's sort of my signature. And I got the nickname Cat Daddy. Um, and it has stuck. It has not gone away. 
Oh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're familiar with that. Uh, that's the character Frylock from Adult Swim, from uh, uh, Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Adult Swim started moving into the, the, the shows that were just absurd comedy, for, for, for seemed like for no reason. And the first few times I watched it, I was just like, eh, this is not for me. And then I was at a party and my friend's wife was just, she just couldn't stop just talking about like, Frylock, you are so Frylock. Man, you are Frylock. Listen to her. everybody, come here. And, and and the more she said it, more I'm like, yeah, that's your personality. And I was like, all right, I'll watch the show again. And then when I watched it, I was like, oh, okay, I, I get it now. And um, yeah, I was at Target and saw a French fry <laughs> uh, headpiece. And I was like, I feel like this is destiny. I'm gonna pull this off. Uh, <laughs> I forgot where that puppet is from. It was something that got pulled up. I don't, I don't, I don't remember for the life of me which movie or if it was a commercial, but it got brought up and somebody made the joke that it looked like me. Steve-O uh, from uh, Jackass. He, uh, he was going on tour. He was like, hey, I'm putting away the stunts. I'm doing comedy, stand-up comedy, and I'm doing a show in Austin and I need to promote it. And I guess he said to his manager, hey, find me a good podcast to go on. And that year we had won the Austin Chronicles best uh, podcast of Austin. But uh, yeah, so they, he, uh, they hooked it up for him to come down to our studio. And we figured we'd get a 10, 15, maybe 25 minute interview with him. And he stayed for two hours and we had a great time. Uh, he would have gone out drinking with us, but he's sober. So that was not his thing. That's from our just recent show in New York from just a couple weeks ago. Uh, we were at the at the uh, Intermedium Roulette in Brooklyn. Um, and, you know, it's a modest crowd, about a little over 300 people, and we sold out the place. And it was it was uh, and New York gave us a great welcome. Well, you know what? Double toasted. Uh, it, it's it's at a point where we've been around a long time, but we're still growing. It's still fun. Um, it's it's weird to when we discover that someone who's prominent uh, listens to us because I always think we're just for a younger audience. Matter of fact, any of my friends or somebody I meet is like, oh, what is that? I want to listen to it. I feel like, mm, maybe not. You know, it, might, it might not be your thing because uh, it is uncensored. Um, so, you know, don't want to hurt anyone's sensibilities or anything. Uh, we're, you know, we, we're respectful but irreverent. Uh, but if you're looking for that kind of fun, it is it is something for you. And it streams, like I said, five to six nights a week. Uh, and you can always catch it the next day. 